events, such as the one that changed Overwatch history forever. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm a little bit worried right now for the Archives event. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I am Stylosa. Okay, so Jeff has been active on the forums. This was a few days ago and people were asking about the developer updates. Where are these dev updates? What is going on? Well, Jeff actually responded to the thread and this is what he said. Sorry we haven't been doing these as frequently. We do have more planned for this year. We recorded one last week and that will go live next week, I think. All right, so why would this be interesting? So Jeff is saying, look, I've recorded one last week and it's gonna go live next week. Well, I wanna show you guys this. This is the supposed leaked date for the next Archives event. Now, this was on the official website and then it was quickly removed. And there were a couple of things to take away from this. Now, at the time, I completely dismissed the reuse of the Overwatch Retribution logo. Now, I put this down to they're not going to upload new images and graphics to the website because if that straight up said something like Overwatch white dome or something, you know, the name of the next event, um, that would be a major leak and everyone would be like, oh my god, this is a massive leak. So for them to use the same logo again, hey, that, that's kind of fine. Like, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't too worried about that, although I'll explain why I'm worried about that in a second. Um, but then we get onto the dates and it says April the 16th to May the 6th, 2019. Now, those are completely different dates to last year. And obviously it says 2019. So yeah, it, these are the, the dates for the event this year, or at least we believe. Now, these were on the official website. So we've actually got no reason to believe this is fake. It might be fake because you can actually edit the websites in a way so you can take screenshots and put this stuff around. But we believe it was taken off the website. So what's worrying me more though is um, the lack of of stuff which is going on. Now, if we look at the date Jeff has given for this developer update, so he thinks it's going to go out next week, and next week would put us in the realms of, we're going forward from, let's say, um, the 8th, the 9th, maybe there's something on the 9th because it's a Tuesday. If not, then there might be something on the 11th because that's a Thursday. But why would Jeff put out a developer update video next week if it's actually not an event? Because he's not going to talk about the archives event before the event starts, if this date leak of the 16th to the 6th is true. Now, that leak might not be true. Maybe they've pulled the dates forward, or maybe that leak was just a fake leak all along. In which case, next week we get the Archives event. Even so, this makes me really, really worried. But before we get onto that, let's just take a look at the actual frequency of developer updates, because this is quite worrying as well. So developer updates for Overwatch are a massive part of the game, because it's kind of the first time a developer's came out from a big studio and gives these sort of really in-depth breakdowns of what's going on. It made Jeff a, a celebrity and, you know, he became the face of Overwatch through doing it. It was a great thing that the devs did. I, other games have done this in the past, but it's been really, like, synonymous with the Overwatch development team, especially with Jeff Kaplan. So when we go back in time, if we go back to next year, uh, last year, sorry, when we look at January, we got January the 2nd, January the 25th, so there's two. We got February the 6th, February the 14th, so there's four. February the 28th, that's five. March the 24th, that's six. April the 2nd, that is seven. So we got seven developer updates before April. Well, I guess including April the 2nd, right? Seven developer updates. If we look forward at this year, um, we got one in February. That's it. So maybe they're just running out of things to actually talk about. There has actually been quite a few updates to the game, but they just don't warrant enough kind of stuff to make a video and talk about it. See, the thing is, though, I think they still would benefit from Jeff talking about stuff like balance updates, explaining why things have changed on the PTR. I think they still constitute developer updates. Now, it might not be a simple case of there isn't enough to talk about, because I think there, there might be, or at least enough to make videos to put forward out there onto the official YouTube channel. Maybe Jeff just doesn't want to do it. Maybe the, the team have decided to do different things. We'll never really know. But one thing's for sure, the lack of of developer updates compared to previous years is absolutely shocking really this year. And the thing, the danger with this stuff is when the developers stop making the updates, it, it looks like they're sort of giving up on the game. Now, I know they're not. They're act I mean, if anything, the Overwatch development team is going to be increased by 20%. We know this from the Blizzard Activision report after they fired a lot of staff members, which is unfortunate, but they have said they're going to increase the size of the Overwatch team specifically. So that should mean 
more content faster in the future. I don't know how these things work, but more people working on something generally means it's faster. I know you've got to find the right people for the job and all of that jazz, but yeah. So there are things which could be going on here like that we'll never really be privy to. Anyway, why am I worried about the archives event? So last year I was in LA. Now I was in LA a hell of a lot. I think I went to LA like seven times last year or something crazy. Uh, I think in total I've been there like 11 or 12 times. It's getting pretty ridiculous now anyway. But I haven't been this year so far. Now, normally, well, I say normally, but last year they invited influencers, because that's what they call streamers and YouTubers and people on Instagram and Twitter and whatever, over to Irvine for a very special retribution event. They also invited a lot of games media and games press. So we all went over to Irvine. We all went into the fancy Blizzard Auditorium. Jeff and the development team gave a, a big speech, showed us all of the stuff off, uh, showed us the trailer. We then got a chance to go into the actual Team 4 building and play the early build of the Retribution event before anybody else. They allowed us to capture footage on it, which was super cool. And then we could go away and make videos on this stuff, but we were all under NDA, so we couldn't talk about it. So that was cool and that was fine. However, then they went to the Overwatch League and then announced the whole thing. So a couple of days after showing it us, we then go straight to Overwatch League and we get this. Just, just check this out, guys. There are other events, such as the one that changed Overwatch history forever. So how cool is that? Like, that is really, really cool. That's when Blizzard know they've got something good to show. They're like, hey guys, check this out. We've been working on this for a very long time. We want you guys to see it. We've got all of our influencers over. Loads of content's going to get made on it. And by the way, here's a massive announcement. And it's ultra hype. It's mega. It's cool. It's great. Where is it this year? I mean, if if these dates, the leaked date is to be believed or the event's going to start next week, um, I have not been approached. And I, anybody, well, everybody I know have not been approached for anything special. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just out of the loop these days. I don't know. But I, I don't know. It, it seems really weird. There hasn't been a lot of noise about it. And there was a lot of noise about it in the past. So I hope that we are not going to just get the retribution event. And I guess I want to end the video with this. It's a little bit doom and gloom, I suppose. But... What actually does happen if we just get retribution again? Now, the archives, <laughs> there's the Havana map in the Adaway International Airport on Numbani. So we're, we're speculating we're going to get Cuba as a map, right? Or ha Well, Havana, not the whole of Cuba, but we're going to get Havana, uh, the capital of Cuba, obviously, as a map. So that would make sense that if that's true, then that's where the retribution or the archives event takes place. If they just recycle the archives event, they've never done that before. This this is the only event in the game's history which is different every single year. But here's the thing, right, guys? This event, I know for 100% fact, because we were told this by Blizzard, um, it takes them. And in fact, we were sitting in a, a conference room and there was a lot of press. It was like people from Kotaku and Polygon. And they were straight up asking the developer. I think it was Aaron Keller who was the developer in the room at the time. And they were saying, like, how long does this take to make? And he's like, well, it takes a year to make this. Um, it, loads and loads of work. Uh, compared to the other events, Like they're not as much. Uh, there's not as much of a workload. Like, this is really, really intensive. So I I'm kind of getting a bit, like, uh, down here and thinking that maybe they've just sort of ran out of time because of all the problems Blizzard had recently with all the stuff with the layoffs maybe that affected the team in, in certain ways so we're not actually going to get a well a new archives event and if that happened I don't know what happens for Overwatch then because Overwatch like it's a fun game don't get me wrong like when you go into competitive you can have the best games of your life but then you can go straight into a horrifically bad game quick play is like competitive without 
any rules, basically. So people don't really care in quick play. And, and really, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter if you're going to play whatever hero you like. But it is nice to work towards the objective and try and win. So if quick play kind of encouraged that, it would be nice, wouldn't it? So there's a whole host of issues. I, I guess the elephant in the room here with Overwatch is Overwatch League is really successful. Uh, it's more successful than most people thought. And th the big question is, like, is that what Overwatch has turned into? It's just going to be, okay, we're going to do three hero launches a year. We're going to have, like, two, two maps, maybe three maps at a push. Uh, and then we're just going to kind of have some new cosmetics for all of our events that we do the same every year, with the exception of archives, which sometimes we update. Now, of course, to end this video, there maybe is a new event here. I, this could just be doom and gloom off me. I hope there is. I really, really hope there is. Retribution or the Archives event is a really cool event. It does bring a lot of people back to Overwatch because it's got that PvE element, which is the only time you can really experience that in Overwatch, which is huge. All right, guys, I've been Stylosa. This is Unit Lost. If you guys enjoyed the video, then like the video. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Stylosa. It's also at Stylosa on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. Toodaloo.